So, WWE Backlash is coming up this Sunday. And A, I couldn't blame you if you didn't know it was coming up Sunday. And B, coming off of the heels of first WrestleMania and then last Friday's Greatest Royal Rumble, I can't blame you if you don't particularly care. But Backlash is upon us. It's a dual-branded pay-per-view. You're going to have some Raw matches and you're going to have some SmackDown matches. And we'll see how all this crap really works out. It really feels like, though, more than usual, that this is largely just a throwaway pay-per-view. Which is interesting to me, because while it feels like a largely throwaway pay-per-view... There are actually a lot of things that have me interested about this show. It just seems odd and crazy to say, but it's true. Like when I look at the card, I'm just going to dive right in. Daniel Bryan versus Big Cass. Are they really going to have Big Cass go over Daniel Bryan? Like, does the WWE, Vince specifically, feel that insignificantly towards Daniel Bryan's full-time in-ring return that once you get past the feels and the sentimentality of WrestleMania, you're just going to get back to jobbing out Daniel Bryan. I, I just can't wait to see if Big Cass actually beats Daniel Bryan. And the realistic thing is, if you're sending Big Cass at Daniel Bryan, he needs to beat Daniel Bryan because it could make Big Cass's career. It does absolutely nothing for Daniel Bryan to beat Big Cass because it doesn't matter. He doesn't need it. And losing to him will do nothing to hurt him. So yeah, they could actually have Big Cass beat Daniel Bryan because of course they would. Uh, the Intercontinental Championship, The Miz versus Seth Rollins. I'm assuming Seth Rollins is going to retain. And I'll tell you, in terms of on Raw, Seth Rollins is their mid-card baby-faced uh, Intercontinental Champion. No issue with that. I would rather still Miz be the mid-card champion. But at some point in time, if you're going to put him in a main event program against somebody like Roman Reigns, then I would rather have that. But... Are they potentially going to have somebody like Finn Balor? Of course, they make him the Rainbow Warrior, so their answer very soon after would to turn him heel. I'm probably making a big leap here, but why the hell not? So I'm actually a little interested to see if they could have this match be interrupted by somebody interfering. Or perhaps it's going to be the Miz Taraj that comes in and interferes. Who knows what could happen? Uh, the SmackDown Women's Championship. It's Carmella's first pay-per-view title defense. Are they going to have her actually beat Charlotte Flair? Are they going to have a way for her to lose but still retain the title? Or will they have had her cash in just to immediately drop the strap back to Charlotte Flair so that way they can get back to what the hell they want to do? Again, when I look at this show, the matches don't really excite me themselves. To me, it's all about the booking decisions and the vision and the direction that's going to come post this show. The U.S. Championship... Randy Orton versus Jeff Hardy. This match could either be pretty good or it could be a pretty big snoozer. And I'm not sure which one it's going to be. But are we going to go right back to having Randy Orton win the U.S. title? And that's why you had Jeff Hardy win it off of Jinder just so that way Randy could win it back. Or are you actually going to run with Jeff Hardy with this thing a little bit? The Raw Women's Championship. Alexa Bliss. She's trying to get it back from Nia Jax. This really feels like one of those situations where Nia got the WrestleMania moment. They felt like they had no choice based off the way it was built and the way the audience was reacting at the time because of the quality of Alexa as a heel that Nia had to get that payoff at WrestleMania. She had never won that women's championship, so there was a place to do it. Now that we're past that point, they're going to go right back to putting it on Alexa and doing what the hell they want with her. That's what it feels like to me. Braun Strowman and Bobby Lashley versus Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. I guess. I mean, you have a pretty good feeling, don't you, of who's going to win this match? 
I would think. I think the only real intrigue here to me is seeing what dynamic, if any, plays out between Braun Strowman and Bobby Lashley. Are you going to build up towards something between them, uh, paying off at Money in the Bank, or is it going to play into a factor here in the Money in the Bank ladder match? Or are we going to start them on their own program? Or are we going to do absolutely nothing with them? I don't know. I hope they figure out something a little bit better to do and more integral and important for Lashley to do than just sitting there and wrestling a last-minute thrown-together tag match against Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. But I don't know if I have confidence in the company to do that at this point, honestly. But this feels like one of those matches that the people could probably get into and enjoy from a live event standpoint that watching at home I just won't care that much about because I feel like I already know who's going to win and it's not really a match I have a whole hell of a lot of reason to care about. It's actually one of those few matches that there's not a whole lot of intrigue there, but even then, still, still as intrigue to me, because I do wonder if there's a chance that they try to build something between Strowman and Lashley. Maybe not, don't know, haven't been reading the dirt sheets, so couldn't tell you what the rumors are, just wondering. Um, Roman Reigns versus Samoa Joe. Now this is, of course, a match that makes sense. This is a match that the company has been building up to for a little bit. These guys have tussled a little bit before. Samoa Joe has been absolutely fire on the microphone lately. I mean, his mic work has been really, really good. Roman Reigns has been battling Brock Lesnar and losing in title match after title match. So now you get to the point here at Backlash... Are they really going to have Roman Reigns lose his third straight feature pay-per-view event match, this time against Samoa Joe? Then on the flip side, are you going to sit there and have done this with Samoa Joe, have the guy miss WrestleMania to sit there and come here and be on fire like he has been on the microphone to just have him sit there and job out to Roman Reigns? Which path and which direction are they going to go down? And the truth is, I don't know. And the truth is, to me, there is a lot of interest for a Roman Reigns and Samoa Joe story. There's a lot of interest there for a Roman Reigns and Samoa Joe program. And it's something I could really sink my teeth into and really latch onto. But we've been so focused on Reigns and Lesnar, especially with the Greatest Royal Rumble event, it's been awkward the whole time like Samoa Joe. Oh, you get this shot. Once Brock Lesnar beats you, then you're my bitch at Backlash like he's getting Brock sloppy seconds here. It's just kind of funky and weird to me. The right thing to do feels like either one of two things. Either have some type of double count out where you don't have the decisive finish and both become better for it. Or Samoa Joe has to win. Because if he didn't have Roman Reigns beat Lesnar the last two times, then clearly you weren't confident enough in him to go all the way with him and truly make him the guy, then he doesn't matter nearly as much as we all thought he did a month or two ago. And as a result, if we're in that position, then you got to see what you can get out of Samoa Joe. You can always come back to the Roman Reigns bandwagon later. It feels like Samoa Joe needs to win here. I'm just not sure that's the path that we're going down. Uh, in terms of what I think might be the main event, although I doubt it because you got Roman Reigns versus Samoa Joe, but for the moment, I will assume the no DQ match for the WWE Championship between Shinsuke and AJ is going to close out this show. It didn't close out WrestleMania. Thank God. But it could potentially close out this show here. Now, to me, Shinsuke Nakamura has been inherently more interesting as a nut crunching heel. Like, not a lot of depth there, but the no speak English stuff, the low blowing AJ Styles whenever he has a chance, like, that's a heel I can get down with. That's a heel I can get into. All that stupid stuff that Nakamura was doing as a babyface, I'll pass. But what Nakamura is doing now as a heel. Gives you reasons to legit not like him. Gives you reasons to get behind AJ Styles. I'm really down with the shtick and gimmick. Maybe other people aren't. Maybe they want to see more than the nut cruncher from Nakamura. But shit, it's something. And it is so much more inherently interesting 
than anything that this dude has done since he got to the main roster. Like, it's not even close. That said, though, if Nakamura doesn't win the title here, then the feels like the company is wasting their time with that heel turn is just wasting their time with everything in general about these two guys. There has to be some type of payoff, although you would assume the story is probably going to be that it's a no DQ match, so Nakamura is going to have no problem going for the nuts. And at some point in time, AJ Styles is going to give that receipt. He's going to return it in kind, and he's going to nut crunch Nakamura. And then he wins. And then you wonder what the whole point of all of this was. And the simple truth of the answer is, I don't know what the whole point of any of this was. I think you run into that bigger fundamental issue going forward is once the Nakamura business do is done and assuming AJ retains as champion, what's next for him? I don't know. It's a great question. Let's hope to God, whether it is the main event or it goes on second to last, that this match, being one of the real significant matches on this card, one of the more important matches on this card, the fact that it is the one match that has its own special type of stipulation attached to it, that this match is going to work. That this match will deliver in every way that the one at WrestleMania did not. Let's hope. Let's hope. Because I don't know if the hardcore New Japan fans could handle this match stinking up the joint like the one at WrestleMania did. And most importantly of all, I don't know if Backlash can afford that type of stink on this card. So for me, this show, again, it's not about the matches. So many of these matches themselves I have very little interest in. It's about the booking decisions, the finishes, that will make or break this show for me. How's it going to go? I don't know. How do you think it's going to go? You tell me, all right? That's what I need you to do. You tell me what you think. So thank you for tuning in to this Backlash preview. I am the Slight Daddy. Remember, this is OTRS Central. Not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. See you later.